All right, well, welcome to the Chaos Research and Scientific Open Source Software Meeting for today, March 21st. And I'm just looking to share my screen, not my inbox, but it's not giving me the option to share my... Oh, I think this is it. Nope, that's not it. Sorry, I'm having a hard time figuring out how to share the right screen today. You want me to share mine? It's getting there. I met, I think I got it. There we go. Yep, you got it. Sorry. I changed some settings on my computer and what do you know, caused problems. Oh, do I know where Easter Island is located? I'm going to say Pacific Ocean, I'm pretty sure, but that's as far as I can get. Where is <laughs> that, it, Matt? That is cur it is the Pacific Ocean. I mean, that's a very, it's like a third of the Earth's <laughs> surface, so it's a, <laughs> it's a safe I, bet. I learned that it's owned by Chile. I didn't, I didn't, or it's under the auspices of Chile, so I didn't know really? that. It's very far away from Chile. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I learned a few years ago that Greenland is uh, part of Denmark, which I didn't oh, yeah, realize. I yeah. I guess that came into the popular consciousness when a former president thought he could just buy it from Denmark. <laughs> so when we, let, when we met last, we were talking about the working plan for this group and, ne and next steps and focusing on identifying important. So what is important? What are the important projects? And what are some qualitative and quantitative metrics that we might think to apply to um, identify these important projects? Uh, Anessa shared the survey, I think, uh, in, the, in the chat in the last two weeks um, for uh, NumPy. And then um, Matt, you looks, looks like you added uh, the bewildering complexity making it more approachable, which I know you and I have been talking about on a number of fronts. Yeah. So <clears throat> it's a setup. Um, what are some things, I don't know if we want to start with Vanessa's survey and talk about that or try to think about what, what heuristic measures that we use or what folk measures we want, we might use and try to arrive at something more stable or sustainable. Um, well, was the first one is identifying projects that we want to kind of, um, put metrics against that we can understand. Yeah. So, is. yeah, I, yeah. So is the first one and some, maybe somebody else remembers better. Is it, uh, should we list projects that are important and then go look at the characteristics that they have or try to list the characteristics first? Yeah, I think, I mean, just thinking about this a little bit, I was wondering, are we, um, are we trying to look at important projects because we kind of know something about them and we can then look at qualitative and quantitative metrics and see if they tell us something or are we trying to look at important projects where we don't already know something and then we want to derive qualitative and quantitative metrics that are useful in some way. I, sorry, I'm not, I, I feel like those are different but I'm not completely sure that they are as I say them. Yep. But uh, I guess the question is why are we doing this? What are, what are we trying to get out of this? But uh, just going back, we sort of looked at all of the different projects that the folks on the call last time came up with. Um, and all these perspectives are kind of down in the detailed notes from last time, which was pretty, a lot of notes actually. Um, and, but we've kind of got to the end. Um, how do we decide what's important for a uh, ecosystem for industry, um, scientific Python looked at tele telemetry data, um, creating a new narrative around data that's where data is one component. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. So, Sean, I guess what I was actually uh, asking was maybe slightly different, which is why do we want to identify what's important? What's what's our goal in doing this? My impression is our goal is to identify to be able to identify important projects when we uh -huh, see them, okay. to be able to know that a project is important to and that we recognize not only activity levels or contributor numbers or even downloads may really give you a full view of the importance okay. of a project in some ecosystem. Okay, I think I was looking at this um, in, the, in today's agenda, I think I was looking at this backwards. So, so the idea is not um, that we want to figure out what are important projects and identify metrics to them, but we want to figure out metrics and then use them to identify important projects, I think. Yes, I think so. I think that's what we want to do. <clears throat> Okay. Sorry, it was just the way that was phrased it was getting it was making it backwards to me, or it was making me think about it backwards. Okay. Yeah, I put that. I mean, importance is one aspect, I guess, of of sustainability of the project, right? Because, um, well, I mean, an import a project that's important to the ecosystem is something that you want to sustain. Uh, Typically, so yeah, I think having some metrics that help identify uh, which which of those projects are the important ones would be a useful thing to to you know working towards understanding the sustainability of the projects in an ecosystem. Okay, so I'm, I'm that just makes sense. In a way that makes more sense to me, at least. And importance is such a broad word so that it would is. be like I, the first thing that comes to mind why is it important because many other projects because it's a dependency for other projects so that would maybe give more clarity to what we were discussing as important projects yeah that's one that's one metric i guess <clears throat> i mean it might be that the sponsor thinks it's important <laughs> or something you know like Whoever's paying for it thinks it's important. Uh, so yeah, I think there are other kinds of metrics that could be used, but maybe are not quantitative, I guess. I think in the scientific computing ecosystem, there's probably quite a few projects that are like that, where they only exist because DOE thinks that they're important and so they, they continue to fund them or an NSA or someone, you know, funds them. Um, how they become important, I don't know. Like it, maybe there's, uh, there's um, some kind of, uh, you know, input from the projects to the, to the, the sponsors or the funders that uh, you know communicates the importance of that project or maybe the whole community feels like they're really important i'm not quite sure how that works but probably different ways I mean, I, 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 sorry i feel like we're kind of just repeating the part from last time which yeah is i think so. yeah uh, yeah we're just talking a little bit an hour about who's blessing but um yeah i'm just trying to remember you know okay. what, what it was that we were trying to do <laughs> um, <clears throat> I, th I think what we were trying to do is come up with some way of, I mean, it's, I don't know, to know a project is important. And I, I certainly agree that a funder sponsoring a project is one of those, it's one of those signals that doesn't arise from metrics, really. It arises from somebody's subjective judgment that a, that a project is important, right? And those, those are ones that probably don't get identified through metrics at all. Uh, unless we can say these are, if there is some set of projects that have this status, we could possibly look at the activity around them and find similarities around such projects that let us identify them without knowing them in advance, for example. 
I mean, I think if we um, if we had a list of those projects and we had a list of projects that had that were identified through uh, quantitative metrics, I would hope that there would be a strong overlap between them, although probably not identical. And, and if, if there's not, then that's indicating either we have the metrics wrong or the funders are making bad decisions. <laughs> which, I, it? which I think both could happen occasionally, but I don't think both happen all the time. So to me, go ahead, Anessa. Uh, no, uh, I didn't mean to speak. Okay. Oh, okay. Tabuka? Tabuka, are you trying to talk? Somebody dropped the minutes in for Abuka and Bill. Oh. <clears throat> I mean, when I when I hear this, when I think about like importance of a project, I immediately think of this ephemeral concept of the software supply chain, which is this like vague concept that people seem to put out there all the time. Um, so if we're going to talk about, say, connectedness of of projects, I would assume that importance is kind of tied to that connectedness some project is being has got some critical place in in a supply chain um but i'm not sure that we really have a, a clear way of even how to identify a supply chain i think we all kind of know what it is vaguely uh, but i think empirically we're not really there so my suggestion at least, or at least where my thoughts go is how would we even, it's kind of that bewildering complexity. Like how do we even begin to untangle the spaghetti, the bowl of spaghetti that is a supply chain? Like if we're, we're gonna try to look at something, how do we even look at it in the first place? I'm not sure how we could even begin to do that. I don't think dependencies alone are it. So I think dependencies are an important part of how we understand projects and their connectedness. But I think people are also part of that. Um, so, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. OK. Um, just thinking about this, I guess, from kind of based on what you're saying, I think there's a higher level question, which maybe partly goes to this funding agency part in the blessed part, which is which supply chains do we care about? Yes. Um, but then assuming that we do think we know of one, um, I think then there's a question like what what is the supply chain supplying? What's the end that the supply chain is building to? And I think in our case, that often could be thought of as a, uh, a science or engineering project or a science and engineering paper. Um, it could be a, a product as well in some cases, like a, I don't know, an accelerator, some, some device, something like that. Um, but in I think in either case, I actually guess I would maybe slightly disagree with you, Matt, and say that I think dependencies, if we actually were able to capture all of them, would would be what we care about. I, I'm not sure that there would be things that people would say that wouldn't be captured in dependencies if we were able to capture dependencies fully. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's fine. I, I, I mean, dependencies are, I believe, <laughs> to be critically important in this. Um, but to me, just looking at dependencies is just building a dependency network, similar to building a social network. Right. I guess the part that I'm maybe the the part that I was thinking about that's slightly different than how you're thinking, and I don't I, maybe I'm I may be assuming too much, um, is that the dependencies of a paper can't be captured through software directly, but we have to look at citations and yep. other things as well. And so I, I, I guess by dependencies, I don't mean strictly um, or if this Python code imports this Python code. So more than just like the technical dependencies, is that what you're saying? I mean, I guess I mean more than the dependencies that um, are captured purely internally in software. Fair. I agree with that. Uh, I got citations and software dependencies as the two main categories, Dan. 
<clears throat> is that what you meant? I think the other, so the other one to me would be like, if we had um, electronic lab notebooks that people use regularly, what would show up in those as well? Because I, I think the question is like, what do people actually use? And then what does that use? And that's hard to figure out. In scientific software, do you see people moving between projects like you would in a corporate space much? You know, so the intent, like what you'll see in corporations a lot is you'll have one, one person working in one project and you can identify their work in that project. Um, but then they'll also work in upstream projects to help kind of stabilize the relationships between the two. Do you see that in scientific software? I like guess a, a social network where you have people bridging between projects. Yeah, so I think in in academia, and I don't, I can't really say on the national lab side very much, um, but I think in academia, yes, to a limited extent. Um, I, I think there's a, a small fraction of people that do that, and then there's a larger fraction of people that if they if they're working on something else besides their project, it's maybe that they're saying there's an issue or a bug report but okay. they're not actively doing anything else. Okay. Um, I, I guess, the, sorry, the way I took your question initially though, was that, um, so it, like at NCSA, at least everybody is working on at least two and maybe three and maybe five projects. Um, so sometimes it's a little bit hard to figure out the relationship of somebody that's working on five projects and there's something upstream from one of them. And which which thing that's upstream from? So it's, I, I don't know if you're if you were really saying like in the corporate world people are just working on one thing at a time. Right? But, no, so I think there at least in the corporate space that I've seen there's usually kind of a high relationship between two projects that might have a technical dependency between them, okay. and the same people who are working in both of those projects they they want to kind of secure and stabilize that relationship, both socially and technically. Okay. Yeah, and I think for, for us, for at least my my version of academia, I would say that that's like, I don't know, maybe there's 5% of people that are in that situation, but most people are just working on their own thing and they're hoping the thing they depend on works. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Uh, I would say in our, certainly in the projects I work on, that if we are relying on upstream, then that would be, something that we do um but i don't know how you know common that is across the whole lab complex so but i do know you know in our software engineering teams and groups uh we we definitely do that all the time so it's common okay and i, I guess I, I should say that the one the exception to that um for me would be um when we're actually building both things, kind of when we are the leads of both things, uh, which happens a fair amount as well, that we, we're right. building a technology and then we're also building an application that's going to use that technology. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Well, in, in my observation, working across public and private sector and many industries, is that there is definitely a lot more mobility in commercial sector. You usually, it's very niche, for example, you do deployment with uh, Azure and you will be, it's not that unusual to work on four or five projects at the same time, uh, like setting this up. And also essentially you, you do what you are paid to do. And, uh, and this is coming from the experience, like in the past year I led 60 projects. So I, I can tell you it's uh, like, there's a lot of mobility. Uh, whereas, when we talk about volunteers in the scientific computing, uh, these are more like hobby clubs. So there is very little mobility in my observation, at least in the Python ecosystem. People like to work with this group of people. They're doing it on their own time. So they just, uh, there isn't much mobility. There is more mobility in academia, a little more, but nothing compared to the corporate world. Okay. And then Matt, I wanted to, circle back on what you said that like, importance like, how do we define projects as important on dependencies definitely a strong metric but also i i agree with you that 
people uh, is also like, an important part of it. And it, what, while we were talking, I was thinking about in our focus projects uh, that I would say it's a community of 150, maybe 160 now. And like, do we have contributors who are working on, let's say, five projects that are not strong dependencies, but collectively they are very important for the ecosystem as projects? And when we talk about sustainability and support, we really talk about people. So NumPy, you know, NumPy is a collection of people. And then Ibis Pandas, uh, also a collection of people. So if we have, I, I can think of several developers who are working on the smaller projects that bring a lot of value. And would, if you have funding, I would rather give money to them than to a big project that uh, has multiple volunteers. So that, that's my point. <clears throat> That's super helpful. Thank you, everybody. So my, I was uh, sorry. Can I go can ahead, I just ask? It? Yeah, I, I I wanted to go back to the dependency types thing because I'm trying to wrap my head around the citation aspect of the, of the dependencies and what that actually means as a dependency. Um, I I don't know. I don't really understand how uh, the citation aspect makes a, a particular software project more important uh, even if it's being cited uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that that you know needs to be something that should be sustained I mean usually it was a piece of research or something and unless it's actually been actively uh, depended upon or included or somehow linked to Yeah, I, I mean, so I guess from my point of view, I think the. Greg, did you mean to stop talking? Because. Oh, sorry. You kept. It, yeah, I think we just lost your mic there, Greg. Ah. Because your lips, Greg's lips were still moving. <laughs> and, okay, uh, very, very small in my uh, in my screen, so I couldn't actually see that. Can you talk, Greg? He's not muted. I don't hear him. I guess go ahead, Dan. We'll wait for Greg to come back. Okay. Um, I, so I guess I was thinking of, um, I, I think for me, citation and kind of this electronic lab notebook idea are very similar in terms of capturing what somebody has done. Um, and that's, I, I don't see how we would get either of those things from software dependencies because it seems like from software dependencies, we have to have like something that we're starting with and then we're going backwards from that to figure out all the different pieces that went into it. But if there's multiple things, then, then it seems like there's a different issue. So like if, um, just as an example, if somebody was uh, uh, doing some kind of uh, physics simulation and they have some software that they use to, uh, to design uh, some kind of CAD software they used and then they use that to design some kind of mesh or description of an object and then they did some visualization using a different tool and they went back to the first one and and then eventually they got the mesh they were happy with and they did some analysis and then that produced a file and they did some visualization I, I don't know like there's all these different pieces and i don't know how we would capture dependencies because there's not one overlying thing on top of all this except for the paper or the electronic lab notebook i see so you're I think what you're talking about are like when I write a paper and I put together like four Jupyter notebooks to do a set of four different analyses, how do I track that and attach it to a paper? Is it kind of that scenario where it's... Um, yeah, that, I think the that software that's... may only live the distance of a paper? Well, I, I'm not, I guess I'm not as... Right, so that may be the case, but that wasn't the thing that I was thinking about. It was more the fact that the that the work, the project, the paper, or whatever may be dependent on on a number of different software activities that aren't really connected in software, but are connected by a person. Ah, uh, okay. And so just the, there's there's nothing to look at the if you look at the dependencies of one of those, like the analysis software, 
that doesn't tell you anything about the other things that were also important to that overall project or that overall paper. So that, that's where citations came from to me or the, or the electronic lab notebook is the, just this idea that there's something on top that doesn't directly in a software sense connect everything else, but in a human sense does. Sorry, Greg, can you can you speak again as well as hearing now? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry, that was like completely weird. Okay. Did, so did that did that help explain? Oh, what I, didn't, I didn't hear. I only heard the last part of what you said. Uh, okay. But you were saying that there's something. So where you've got like multiple pieces of software that are somehow connected together uh, by the by the paper or by the research or or is that yeah. what you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So, but what does that make? So, does that make the individual projects important then, or the whole collection of them important in some way? Because kind of what we were talking about was like what makes a project important. Um, yeah, sorry, or, what, what a project? You mean a software project? Software, yeah, a piece of software. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess I, my concern would be that if we were just looking at, um, I don't know, like the, 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 again, kind of the equivalent of the analysis software, um, then we're missing out on the other pieces of software that are also important to the overall work. Mm. And that using a, using citations or an electronic lab notebook or a way of trying to capture what actually happened in the overall work. Maybe the, maybe Dan, maybe you had mentioned this earlier, like maybe it's not, uh, we don't call a project important. We call a collection of projects or a supply chain important. And then what it is, is trying to identify the projects within that collection that might need help in some way. They appear to be, to be failing in some way. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that was not me that said that, but it sounds reasonable. Okay. Okay, <laughs> picked it up somewhere. I feel like hmm. but maybe you're looking at a. Well, somebody had said defining importance is hard. Maybe it was Anessa or something. But Anessa, okay. Um, I think there's consensus on that. Okay, <laughs> maybe that's not a great term. There's, there's like no at big the project debate. level because yeah. there could be a small project that's critically important, but like it doesn't look like it from a distance. But so maybe the the better approach is to think about what is a collection of projects that would be important and then within that collection trying to understand which of those projects um, might be failing in some way failing not a great word but might need support in some way yeah, yeah I, like, I like that idea i think that that also captures the what i think dan you were saying with respect to the citations and these electronic lab notebooks because that could be considered a supply chain in a way right it's tying those projects together uh, into some kind of collection. Yeah, I, I think the one thing to be a little bit um, uh, careful about, and this, this has kind of come up in some of the discussions about like which software should be cited in a paper, is that there's the software that somebody used, and then there's the other pieces of software that they could have used. And if they just randomly chose one out of 10 and the other nine would have been fine, then the importance of the 10th one probably is pretty low. But the importance of having one of those 10 is pretty high. So it's, it's, it's very, I mean, maybe this is going back to like, it's, it's very hard to decide what important means. But it also, like, it does mean it, it, there's, there has to be some sense of alternatives and, and a lack of alternatives being a, a high factor in importance as well. I've certainly seen like in the R universe, there's usually 10 libraries for every single thing you want to do. So <clears throat> that's certainly a, a universe where I've experienced. I'm picking one and I'm making a reasonably good choice, but there are all these others. Right. And maybe, uh, yeah, in some, in some ways, I don't know how you would measure this exactly, but, um, but importance is kind of like the lack of something would doom the project. It's almost like the bus factor. For software, in our in our metrics, we had something called significance, 
so we had importance. That was definitely something, but we also had significance as a, as a metric. Um, and and what you're talking about sounds like it might be something like that because, like the uniqueness of a of a particular piece of software makes that software significant. You know, versus uh, you know, if there's ten versions of the of software doing the same thing, then uh, you know those ten things may not be as significant. I, I don't know if that helps. But we had other measures for or other things that contributed to what we considered to be significant in terms of you know what the software actually does and and how it influences research and things like that. But, um, or whether that's useful in this in this case. I, I assume, Greg, that identifying the significance that you described, that was primarily a qualitative activity where you kind of asked and looked. Uh, I, yeah, I'd have to check what we did. I think it was mostly qualitative. Yeah, it was self-assessed, really. You mm -hmm. know, the project would say, you know, we we do impact on on policy or something. You know, the results of or the this software is used to influence policy decisions, makes it significant. So that would be a sort of a self-reported uh, qualitative measure. Yeah, I, I think just as a like as a minor point, if I'm just thinking about these in English, I'm not sure I could define a difference between importance and significance. So, so I feel like if we want to make these words that have particular meanings, that's that's fine. We just need to define them carefully. Significance. I, Go ahead, Vanessa. I, w I was. I don't know how to translate it into the word that would be useful for us but what I, it comes to mind to me I, I've, I've been looking at grant proposals lately quite a bit and the impact on on ecosystem like so maybe like impact i don't know <laughs> i mean like we're all talking about the same thing obviously but how to use the word that would be the, the most accurate to to describe it and you know the more i'm thinking about like how do you choose like the, do you rely on if you rely heavily on dependencies then you overlook the like the, the people and the people are the, you know the ones who are building these projects i know there is a lot of talk about ai but it's still people who are writing the code and building communities uh, and then so like far. but then but then if you big bet on people, then you might have the situation where, you know, the bus factor is very small or like you're not focusing on the sustainability in terms of documentation and and so on. Mm -hmm. So I think this like striking this balance where you identify contributors, humans who are contributing to the wider ecosystem and also projects that are dependencies for many projects like in the in the systems that you're working on, uh, maybe this could be a, a, a balance of like, where to put your efforts. And I think like, this is what, as I understand, this is what Greg and his team are trying to achieve: is to identify which projects to focus on, right? I think so. I think that's definitely true in part. Um, I'll just I, I agree with almost everything that you're saying, and so I just wanted to mention one like quick story when um, when I was working for NSF I went to a conference and somebody there was giving a talk and they talked about the, the biggest challenge for the software that they led was sustainability and after the talk I asked them what would happen if they stopped working on the software and the answer that they gave was that the users would keep it running because it was so important to all of them and so that said to me that from my point of view as a funder at that point the sustainability problem was fine. There wasn't a sustainability problem, but from their point of view as a hirer and a manager of people, right, they had a sustainability problem. So I think like even when we talk about people, it's people are replaceable in some senses and sometimes and other times they aren't. And it's really hard to, I think, to distinguish like when, right, when a volunteer 
or a leader is the person that is needed in order to keep that going. And when there's other people, it would be perfectly happy to step in. And if that person left, it wouldn't actually make a difference. To me, the people part, like continuing to include the people is just to make sure that we don't over index on the technical things that we can grab, like dependencies. Yeah, so I, I think that including the people part is very, is definitely important, um, but it's not always the specific people, I guess. That's fair. So I uh, I took a look at the significance uh, rating that we metric that we had, and one of the things I had in <laughs> that's in it is the number of publication citations. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so I think it's actually basically there are two there are two ways of saying the same thing. Is that too important and yeah. I mean, I, and, and I feel like I've I've given this example before as well, but I'll just say it again because I can't remember if I said it here or not. That um that you could think of something as, as being significant or important or having impact if it's, let's say it's um, it's essential for 25 different projects. Um, and each of those projects is writing papers and is getting funding from a federal agency. Um, but but there also could be a piece of software that's essential for, for only one project, but that one project is the Nobel Prize winning project. And so it's a little bit like it, it's a little bit hard to figure out which of those are more impactful. Like it, it's, the, the impact and significance are very hard to measure here. There, there is a, right, a, a, a qualitative aspect. I'd say the Nobel laureate one is important. We have a we have a Nobel laureate at my university, and I was at a social function with him last night, and you never. They, ne they never they never don't mention it when the Nobel laureates in the room somebody always mentions it so and by the way our party has a Nobel laureate um, so yeah that seems important to me and although the one person I know of it is uh, I, well, I guess I, yeah, maybe I know a couple of people but one of them um, will never mention it and I think feels embarrassed about it <laughs> yeah they're not they're not at that party but <laughs> Maybe I have one. I've just never yeah. to anybody. You, you, that, <laughs> that would be like you, Matt. I mean, I think what we landed on is there for our purposes, there is no meaningful distinction between significant and important. I'm wondering what the next step here might be. And the same question. Like, I think it might, I don't know. I, I, because I do analysis of this kind of data, I might just jump there too quickly, but it seems like getting some examples fleshed out with some metrics might be useful, like a, a project that we would not likely identify as important or significant just by looking at the trace data, but is. And I don't know if anyone has any examples like that, that you know maybe we could do an analysis before the next meeting and see, see if that profile speaks to us, like if it sounds reasonable. It's one idea. It does. But I think what I would love to see is if there's a way that we can um, like parcel out what we believe to be a set of projects that are part of a supply chain. So again, we have this, I don't know, there was like somebody who put together a dependency map of Debian and it was just like a, a wall of, <laughs> you know, like, connection it just didn't it didn't look like anything because you couldn't do anything with it yeah this is so this is part of what john stark is doing in the um osi uh open open source science initiative okay um that's part of numfocus like like how to slice out something that's observable and like you could empirically look at <laughs> I think what he's trying to do is to do like a mapping of software supply chains in particular ecosystems or for particular purposes. Okay. Uh, so I should take a look at that. Let's see if I can find this. He, we, we have yeah. actually a hearing committee 
the thing like that today. So I don't know if I don't know if you know him or not, but um Yes, I'm very familiar with the work that John is doing. I share the link in the chat. Oh, that... Okay. Yes, this is, I don't know if this has been done before. This is an interesting concept that like, because of me being part of NumFocus, I, as a volunteer, um, I, I get regular updates on their progress. And I think this is something that would be of value. And when I was talking about like this contributors, this humans working on multiple projects that, that seem to be unimportant uh, as separate but it's a cluster as you can see on, on the photos like that that's something that uh, was inspired by this project do they provide a method at all you know i the, it was shared in the past i don't know if it's on the okay. website but i know on the internal Slack channel, non-focused Slack channel, uh, dedicated to OSI. They've been talking about the software that they're using. Okay, what is this you're looking at, Sean? Where'd you get this? That? Is the document? So I would, I think there is some explication of the method. Okay. In here, it is linkable. Um, if you click read oh, more, okay, gotcha. It wasn't initially obvious to me how to read our draft concept paper because clicking on it didn't work. But read more takes me there. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Go ahead. I was just going to say on that document that you had gotten to there, there was a data data entry manual entry data methods down at the bottom. So. Okay. Because I'd love I'd love to know like how they operationalize this. I, I know when it comes to data collection, there is a Google form I believe, maybe type form, uh, where you I. And many of us who are attending non-focus events entered manually our name and what projects we're working on. Okay. That was one of the points of that collection. I don't know if it's the only one. It's yeah, I see it. It's like down on page 10. It says manual input. I'm guessing that's methods right there. I think the other, I mean, the other thing with this is that as far as I know, and, and so maybe you, you may have a different opinion, it seems like John has been doing a lot of this himself, and I don't know if there's really been other people involved in kind of producing these maps. And it, I'm not sure if there's a team behind them or if it's really just John, and, and maybe we just want to talk to him in one of these meetings. I know Tim Bonneman is also working on this initiative, but I'm not sure if he is working specifically on this project because the OSI has a few initiatives. Yeah, we I just... definitely can reach out to John and see if he would like to join one of our meetings and we could work together. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was in a meeting with Tim a couple of weeks ago and I don't, you know, I don't think he's actually technically working on this one, but I'm not, I'm not completely sure either. Um, do some, and I said, it sounds like, you know, John, perhaps, um, you could reach out to him and see if you'd like to, or be able to join us at the, at the next meeting or the meeting after that. Yes, I can do that. Okay. Yeah, that would be great. We could give him a, a lead, lead time to help us, uh, sort through this. And I will also do the analysis piece based on our discussion to try to arrive at something else to talk about that's a, because I think we've talked I feel like we've talked through the conceptualization of what's important and what we want to look at enough um, to the point where I think it might be helpful to say okay here are some chaos metrics that might be a useful proxy and here is an illustration of them against certain projects yeah against um, a selection of projects in a supply chain or whatever however yeah we, however we isolate them yeah I, and I can operationalize supply chain half a dozen different ways off the top of my head. <laughs> okay. So I uh, also yeah. just wanted to comment that the uh, the, the num focus here is a bit pejorative, so. Um... What? No. I saw that. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say anything. Uh, <laughs> did I? Oh, I must have typed that. that that's, that's just a brain fart on my part. I'm going <laughs> to fix that. 
just did it again. I I did. No, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, you did. You you actually put the V. But I, I, yeah, I did. But I was like, nope, nope. Uh, obviously, my brain is just typing out the word. The first half of the word it's thinking about. Um, no, I was. I, I mean, I was partly just thinking about the fact right, that that uh, right that John is doing this from NumFocus, and this is kind of Linux Foundation in some sense. And are there any tensions or politics between the two? And uh, like, oh, we probably don't want to be. Uh, insulting to one from the other so okay i don't yeah i don't feel like yeah no, <laughs> no there are no tensions uh that i'm aware of uh, well this would be helpful if we could come back next week sean if you could kind of show maybe some two preliminary weeks. things or whatever yeah. two weeks two weeks yeah some preliminary things that'd be cool yeah i'll be i'll be prepared with some preliminary things then next okay. time that are an analytical operationalizations of some things chain. that we've talked about and okay. i'll make it clear how and what I operationalized and you can we can go back and iterate on that and if if John is able to join us then we'll give him the front stage and I'll just be prepared as a backup if there's still time okay that sounds good can I um so Sean just to uh, understand are you so you're thinking about looking at this from a particular supply chain uh, yeah and I don't have one picked out like a priori so if there is one like I know what Greg's projects are, but I don't know if they're suitable for operationalizing a supply chain or if that would be maybe too much. If I should pick something more neutral to the group, I'm open to if there are ideas. Yeah, no, I, I didn't have a specific idea. I was just uh, I was thinking of this as the alternative would be like picking a piece of software and then trying to figure out which supply chains it's in. And so I wasn't mm -hmm. sure which way you were thinking of it. So. Ultimately, that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm well, there's two ways I could approach it. I haven't decided. One is I could pick a piece of software and look where where it's used. Um, the other is that I could pick a defined ecosystem that I know exists and that others qualitatively have judged it to be an ecosystem and look at look at some of the phenomena of dependencies um, in that space. And I don't know if you all have a preference one direction or another. I don't. It might be harder in the scientific space. I know that like VLF in the corporate space that happens a lot. Those predefined mm -hmm. ecosystems. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how often that happens in the academic scientific space. I don't either. Do both. Well, I'll keep you updated about what I'm working on in the Slack channel between the okay. meetings here. And mm -hmm. I think we're at time actually. I kept looking over here to check my clock, but somehow ultimately missed that time had passed. So sorry for keeping you an extra couple minutes. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye. Have a good one.